Here are the top stories for today, May 6, 2022. More Filipinos got employed in March, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority. The Commission on Elections is all set for Monday's election. The poll body says they are expecting a higher turnout for overseas voters. And Central Luzon gears to become a premier tourism and investment hub. Good day, I am Stephanie Savellano. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. More Filipinos got employed in March 2022. In a media briefing this morning, Philippine Statistics Authority under Secretary Dennis Mapa reported that 46.98 million Filipinos were employed in March, or a 94.2% employment rate. This means that for every 100 Filipinos in the labor force, 94 have jobs. The March 2022 total labor force or those who are 15 years old and above who are either employed or unemployed stood at 49.85 million. It is 1.24 million higher than February's labor force. The March joblessness rate of 5.8% is a marked improvement from the 6.4% unemployment rate in February and the 7.1% rate in March of the last year. The national government is working double time to address a price hike in basic commodities. After the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA announced that the country's inflation rate rose to 4.9% in the previous month, up from 4.0% in March and 4.1% in the same month last year. PSA said April's inflation rate is at record high since January 2019. The statement, Acting Presidential Spokesperson and Communications Secretary Martin Andanat assured the government is working double time to address the socioeconomic concerns of the Filipino people while taming high prices of goods and commodities. It's all systems go for the national and local elections on Monday. Kamala Commissioner George Garcia said all poll body officers and polling precincts are ready for the influx of voters. Data from the complex shows there are over 65.7 million registered voters in the country. May pong vote counting machines, 100% na po ang distribution, yung mga batteries, 100%, uh, CCS, 100%, yung pong balota, uh, na-distribute na po sa lahat ng parte ng Pilipinas, itong NCR, sinimula na po ngayong araw na ito para po kahit paano, pwede na po ito mapadala natin sa ating mga guro. So, Technically po, lahat po halos ay na-distribute na at nakahanda na para sa lunes ng araw ng eleksyon. Opa. Garcia also said the winning candidates may be proclaimed as soon as possible except for the presidential and vice presidential positions. It is Congress who will canvass and proclaim the next top leaders of the country. Pagka po ang posisyon ay mga mayor, um, vice mayor, sanggunian, mga ordinaryo, mga municipalities po natin, usually po sa ating karanasan, minsan sa gabi pa lamang ay proklama na, mm -hmm. medyo nadidelay man hanggang kinabukasan ng madaling araw ng Mayo Adjis, yung sa posisyon ng mayor, vice mayor, sanggunian bayan, dahil lang sa medyo may mga vote counting machines ang hindi nakapag-transmit and therefore kinakailandalhin po mismo sa canvassing area sa bayan. Kapag ka naman po uh, si, uh, city, o kaya naman po provincial uh, governor, vice governor, sanggunayang panalawigan, uh, sa karanasan din po natin, kinabukasan din, Mayo Adjis ay nakakapagproklama na po tayo, lalo na doon sa mga hindi naman kalakihan ng mga probinsya po. At minsan lang, ang dahilan nga muli, hindi lang nakakapag-transmit kaagad yung mga vote counting machines. Pagpuposisyon ng congressman, usually po, kasabay ng governor, same the next day din po ang ating po nagiging proklamasyon. Kapag puposisyon ng senador at part, baka po aabutin tayo ng mga hanggang Mayo at 15 at 16. Hmm. Ngayon po sa posisyon po ng presidente at vice-presidente, nakalagay po kasi sa ating saligang batas na ang kongreso bilang isang body, isang tinatawag na joint session nila, ang magpoproklama ng ating bagong Pangulo at Vice President. Nangangulugan, sila po ang magka-canvas ng result for the President and Vice President. Ganun pa man, usually po, USEC, bago po mag-convene ang Kongreso, 
ay may may mga kumakalat na rin po ng mga partial and official. Mm -hmm. And official pa po yun ha, sa ating mga kababayan. Dahil meron po kasi tayong transparency server na nagbabato ng result mm -hmm. sa ating pong mga citizens arm katulad ng PPCRV, katulad po ng NAMFREL, at sa ating pong uh, major uh, networks or media entities. Contingency measures are in place all over the country. Kabbalah Commissioner Marlon Casuero reports that 23% of the registered overseas voters have so far participated in the exercise as of yesterday. So, meron na po tayo ng advisory, but we don't realize, of course, things have been made in voting. So, kung nangyari ako, it's not an overseas voter, and then mag-e-election na, matapos na yung voting period, pumunta na lang po tayo doon sa Pemana, kung sa ating voting, and then, pwede na po tayo ng mga mag-e-election. The Commission on Elections urged voters to avoid wearing face masks and shirts bearing the names of their preferred political candidates on Monday. The Comelec noted this is considered a form of campaigning. Comelec Commissioner George Irwin Garcia reiterated that the campaign period ends on Sunday. As such, candidates and supporters must already tame down their efforts in letting the people know of their names, positions, and numbers in the ballots. Garcia, however, clarified that the Comelec will not meddle with voters' shirt colors. The voting process may seem overwhelming, but it can be easily done if you know the step-by-step -step process. Marita Muayo will share with us some tips on how to cast your vote at a polling precinct. The Commission on Elections provides a step-by-step -step process on how to vote so that the public will not take long to cast their vote. With over 67.5 million registered voters in the country, it is important that they cast your vote and immediately leave the premises to lessen overcrowding. Step 1. Have your temperature checked before entering the voting center. Step 2. Proceed to the voter's assistance desk to secure your precincts and sequence numbers and the assigned room or clustered precincts. Step 3. Go to your assigned room and introduce yourself to the electoral board by stating your name, precincts, and sequence numbers. Step 4. Get your ballot, ballot secrecy folder and marking pen and fill out the ballot at the voting area. Step 5. Accomplish the ballot by fully shading the oval appearing before the name of the candidate you wish to vote for. Do not overvote. Step 6. Feed the ballot into the vote counting machine. Step 7. Check your voter's receipt and then deposit it in the receptacle. And step 8, have your right for fingernail stained with indelible ink. Remember to vote safe and always follow health and safety protocols. For the PNA Newsroom, I am Marita Muahe. Still ahead, government stakeholders sign a pact for peaceful elections in the Bangsamoro region. Makati prosecutors find probable cause to charge a publishon girl Gwinnett and Shua for violating quarantine rules. We'll be back after a quick break. Keep it here on the PNA Newsroom. Mula sa pinagsamang lakas ng buong Government Communications Group, PTV, Philippine Information Agency, Radio Pilipinas, Philippine News Agency, IBC 13, Commission on Elections, at ng Premier Information Technology Institution sa bansa, ikakasana ang pinakamalawak, pinakakomprehensibo, at pinakamapagkakatiwalaang elections coverage sa telebisyon, Hatol ng Bayan 2022. Sa makasaysayang araw ng ating halalan, walang humpay na pagbabalita ang inyong maaasahan. Magbabantay sa mga kaganapan from 81 remote points in the country in real time. Hatid sa inyo ng inyong mga premyadong tagapagbalita. At ang higit sa dalawang daang news reporters, correspondents, and stringers. Masusubaybayan 
kahit saan sa buong mundo through the command reach of television, radio, and the internet. Makatotohanan, makabuluhan, tapat na pagbabalita ngayong halalan para sa bayan. Hapon ng Bayan 2022. Casting votes amid the pandemic requires extra effort to ensure that Filipinos shall exercise the right to choose candidates safely. Barita Mwai will give us some reminders on what to bring at the polling precinct on election day for a quicker and smoother process. When you vote on election day, you need to remember a few more pointers before going to your polling precinct. Bring your own pen to use to sign the election day computerized voters list. Wear a face mask plus a face shield if you are voting in an area under alert level 4. Bring a valid ID card in case election inspectors ask to verify your identity. You won't need to present a negative COVID-19 test result or a COVID-19 vaccination card to vote. Before you vote, try to know your precinct number in advance by checking out Comelec's special website, voterverifier.comelec.gov.ch slash voter underscore precinct. Once you're inside your precinct, you may bring your cell phone, but do not use it. Write down your list of candidates on a piece of paper instead of using your phone. You are also not allowed to bring campaign materials inside the precinct. Wearing of masks, or shirts and the likes with the name or face of a candidate is prohibited inside the voting centers. Finally, observe the health and safety protocols. The Bangsamoro region is eyeing for a clean, orderly, and peaceful election. This is stakeholders forge a pledge of commitment to ensure a safe and peaceful election in the region. These are the Office of the Presidential Advisor in Peace, Reconciliation and Unity or OPACU, Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF and the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP. The signing was held inside MILF's Camp Bilal in Munay, Lano del Norte, which was once considered a major stronghold of the revolutionary group in the province. The Opel Peru said the signing of the pact is another major milestone in the Bangsamoro peace process. A combined force of police, military and Coast Guard personnel will provide security in Iligan City for the May 9 elections. Arafia Kiram has the story. The Commission on Elections in Iligan City led the simultaneous send-off ceremony of 681 security personnel from the Iligan City Police Office or ICPO, 53 from the Philippine Coast Guard, and about 45 personnel from the 4th Mechanized Infantry Battalion to secure the conduct of the elections in the city. The 55th Infantry Battalion and 55th Engineer Brigade will also deploy their personnel. The Comlex said that Iligan is classified under green category, but the security personnel strengthened its manpower to ensure the safety of voters during the elections. Iligan City is green category. So, but anyway, uh, we are not taking any chances. According to our partners in the PNP, they will deploy at least eight personnel every polling center because ang naasa resolution is at two. Pero ang atong Iligan City Police Office mo deploy sila like eight. O kay labot ang um, no, army units na to. Meanwhile, ICPO City Director Police Colonel Dominador Estrada said that the send-off ceremony manifests that they are ready for the elections. This send-off ceremony is a befitting testimony of our firm aspirations for a peaceful and effective comportment of public service. This signifies that we are all prepared and ready to be deployed in the different areas where our services and assistance are very much needed. Moreover, Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Marlon Famoso, the commander of the 4th Mechanized Infantry Battalion, underscored that the focus of the armed forces of the Philippines during the elections is to ensure the security and safety for the facilitators, voters, as well as the election paraphernalia. He also assured that AFP is always at their service in addressing any commotions that will happen during the election day. 
The Philippine Coast Guard also affirmed their commitment with the personnel and the land and floating assets to transport Comelec equipment whenever necessary. For the PNA Newsroom, Arafia Kiram of PIA Iligan City and Lanao del Norte. Prosecutors have found probable cause to charge party girl and influencer Gwyneth and Shua for violating mandatory quarantine rules against COVID-19 following her return from the United States last December. Shua gained the moniker Poblacion Girl after she allegedly partied in Barangay Poblacion, Makati City while she was supposed to be in a hotel quarantine facility before and after Christmas. She later tested positive for COVID-19. The city prosecutor of Makati said she will be charged for violation of Republic Act No. 11332 or the mandatory reporting of notifiable diseases and health events of Public Health Concern Act. Also charged was Seban Gatbonton, a security guard of Burjaya Hotel who allegedly assisted Shua from escaping detention. Prosecutors dismissed criminal charges against Shua's parents, Alan and Gemma, as well as her boyfriend, Rio Atienza, who was with her when she was photographed with friends. They also dropped similar charges against the hotel workers except for security personnel. More stories from the newsroom. Ukraine calls on ASEAN to suspend its relations with Russia for continuing to wage war. And several families return to Visayas through the Balik Provincia Bago Bagasa program. Details ahead, stay with the PNA newsroom. Mula sa pinagsamang lakas ng buong Government Communications Group, PTV, Philippine Information Agency, Radyo Pilipinas, Philippine News Agency, IBC-13, Commission on Elections, at ng Premier Information Technology Institution sa bansa. Ikakasana ang pinakamalawak, pinakakomprehensibo, at pinakamapagkakatiwalaang elections coverage sa telebisyon. Hatol ng Bayan 2022. Sa makasaysayang araw ng ating halalan, walang humpay na pagbabalita ang inyong maaasahan. Magbabantay sa mga kaganapan from 81 remote points in the country in real time. Hatid sa inyo ng inyong mga premyadong tagapagbalita. At nagigit sa dalawang daang news reporters, correspondents and stringers. Masusubaybayan kahit saan sa buong mundo through the command reach of television, radio, and the internet. Makatotohanan, makabuluhan, tapat na pagbabalita ngayong halalan para sa bayan. Hapon ng Bayan 2022. Government troops in Lanao del Sur are working with various stakeholders to ensure the security of voters and prevent election-related fraud and violence on May 9. More on this from Claire Gige. The 103rd Infantry Brigade of the Philippine Army assured that they are ready to ensure the safety of voters in the province during the elections this month. Brigade Commander Brigadier General Jose Maria Puerto II said they have repositioned some of their forces to ensure strong security protection for the May 9 national and local elections as they also expect augmentation forces from the Tabak Division. The Brigade Commander also disclosed that they have ample forces ready to serve as a quick reaction force for areas that may experience parts of small election violence. They are now setting their sights on places with a history of election-related violence as well as those hotly contested places. Implementation of measures to prevent flying voters from entering the province is also up. I hope that they don't have to do it. Otherwise, they will have a problem if they don't have to do it. 
Meanwhile, the army bared that it was able to secure the support of its partner stakeholders for successful and peaceful national and local elections. Cuerpo shared that they have convened with the Commission on Elections or COMELEC, together with the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF, Moro National Liberation Front or MNLF, Department of Education or DEPED, and religious leaders, among others, to discuss election-related matters which turned out positively, gaining a full support. Uh, they understand the importance and the sacredness of the right to vote ng ating mga uh, kababayan dito sa Lano del Sur. And uh, in fact, sabi nga nila, tutulong kami uh, na mapasiguro natin na ang mga tao ay makaboto on the absence of uh, threat, violence. So yun yung tulong nila sa atin dito sa election. Cuerpo added that he had also privately talked with aspirants to help in securing peace in the elections. He then detailed that they will establish as well a Provincial Election Monitoring Action Center or PMAC composed of the COMLEC, MNLF, MILF and local radio organizations to cover most, if not the whole province. This is the first time also no, na magkaroon tayo ng election na BARM ang mag-handle, BARM under the BARM government. No? This is a challenge to all of us, including ang mga BARM officials talaga, no? to make sure that your elections at the Salazar is very peaceful. Currently, some of the army forces are already deployed to secure the transportation of election paraphernalia to selected municipalities in the province, which started on April 26. For PNA Newsroom, Claire Gigha of the Philippine Information Agency, Lano del Sur. Ukraine is pushing the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN to suspend dialogue relations with Russia as the war that already killed more than 3,000 civilians in the country continues. Ukrainian Ambassador to the Philippines Alexander Nechitailo said Russia should be isolated by other nations for disregarding international law by continuing its actions in Ukraine. The envoy said he would also communicate his position to Foreign Affairs Secretary Teddy Luxin Jr., who is set to represent the Philippines in the upcoming United States ASEAN Special Summit in Washington, D.C. ASEAN's initial reaction to Russia's offensive against Ukraine on February 24 had been described as half-hearted for calling for maximum restraint without condemning the bombings themselves. Nechitailo also appealed to Filipino companies to weigh the moral aspect of doing business with Russia. He said the global economy will remain volatile as long as the Russia-Ukraine conflict continues. Meanwhile, Davos City is willing to accept refugees from Ukraine as the ongoing war with Russia continues to displace thousands of people. Nechitailo said Mayor Sada Duterte personally wrote to him three weeks ago about the offer. With this, he praised the genuine compassion and effort of Filipinos. The Department of Foreign Affairs earlier said some Ukrainian mothers, along with their children, were among the first wave of refugees who arrived in the Philippines. A new batch of beneficiaries, which include five families consisting of 13 individuals, have returned to their homes in Visayas with the help of the government's Balik Provincia Bagong Pag-asa or BP2 program. The beneficiaries started their trip to Sikihor Samar and Northern Samar yesterday. The immediate incentives prior to their scheduled departure from Manila include transportation allowance and emergency cash assistance. Upon their return, the government has also facilitated their fresh start by providing them with short and long-term assistance. Those who wish to apply for the program can access it through www.malikprovincia.nha.gov.ph or may contact the Department of Social Welfare and Development. Central Luzon became the focus of attention along with its opportunities at the first ever Central Luzon Tourism Investment Summit and Business Exchange Hybrid Edition in Clark, Freeport, Pampanga. The Department of Tourism Region 3, together with Tourism Promotions Board Philippines and Subic Clark Alliance for Development, hosted the event last Wednesday and Thursday. The summit presented the tourism investment portfolios and unique offerings that make Central Luzon an ideal tourism and investment destination. Tourism Secretary Bernadette Romulo Puyat said Central Luzon is now one of the most preferred investments and tourism destinations across the Asia-Pacific region. 
She said they expect to see massive and sustained growth in the region in terms of hospitality, manufacturing, logistics, information and communications technology, and aviation-related industries. In sports, the Philippines has begun its bid for medals in football and beach handball at the 31st Southeast Asian Games in Hanoi, Vietnam. The men's beach handball squad faced Thailand today at the Tuan Chau Resort, Halo. Philippine Handball Federation coach Joanna Frankelli said the target is to improve on the bronze medal finish at the 2019 SEA Games in Subic. Meanwhile, the football team battled East Timor in group action set at the 20,000 seating Vient 3 Stadium in Puto. Philippine Olympic Committee President Bambo Tolentino wished the beach handball and men's football athletes good luck as they start the country's bid to defend its overall title in the SEA Games. Tolentino, however, reminded the 641 strong team Philippines to stay safe from the COVID 19. This as three athletes tested positive, with two of them being cleared after a second test. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. More Filipinos got employed in March, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority. The Commission on Elections is all set for Monday's election. The poll body says they are expecting a higher turnout for overseas voters. And Central Luzon gears to become a premier tourism and investment hub. As Filipinos, we all have a vital role to play in preventing the spread of COVID-19. So remember, wear face masks, wash your hands often, practice safe physical distancing, go out only for essential reasons, and get vaccinated as soon as possible to protect ourselves, our families, and the community. Together, we can beat COVID-19. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. For more news content, check our webpage or log on to the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We're shown on the pages of the PZOO and its attached agencies. Also watch us on television on PDV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know from the PNA Newsroom. We tell stories that inspire change. I am Stephanie Savellano. Good day.